Satnam, I want to offer you some variations of staff pose. So if you haven't watched the first video on staff pose, watch it. Watch it so that you can get some basic understanding of what it is. For all of you who have already watched staff pose, fantastic. I want to show you a couple of variations that you can do with it. So I'm not going to get into a lot of the explanation like I did in the first video. So in staff pose, you sit with your legs out in front of you. Your feet, you're drawing towards you. You put the bones of the big toes to connect. You put the ankles of the bones to connect. You put the knees of the bones to connect, which means you have to kind of rotate everything inward. So as this rotates inward, then you lift up your chest. You draw your chin backwards so that you get this nice straight spine. From that position, you then take your hands with your fingers pointing forward. You put them behind you around your hip area and depending upon how long your arms are either further away or closer to you it all depends for me it's right about here you lock your elbow and rotate your elbow so that the fleshy part is forward now again the first video I go into depth about explaining about how to push with your hands not push with your hands watch the first video you'll understand what i mean by that but for the variation of staff pose that I want to show you, I'm going to show you a couple different variations. So I'm going to have to sit this way so you can see it. Same position, you're sitting tall. Once your lower body is locked in and you're sitting up nice and tall, the first variation that you can do is you can extend your arms, extend your arms so that the palms face upwards. They're parallel to the ground. Again, while this is all contracted, so we're still sitting up nice and tall. What you're looking to do is, as much as you can, extend the arms so that they're, they're trying to do this. They're trying to always extend outward as you're holding it. What should happen, fingers together, thumb with the fingers. What should happen is you should start to feel a very gentle stretch in through the nerve. And it's not going to feel pleasant. You'll know that you're doing it well when it doesn't feel pleasant. It does not feel pleasant. But you're just extending, 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 just ever so gently. And you're going to have to play around with that, that gentleness. As far as how much contraction you get out of your lower body and your upper body, somebody brought up a very interesting point to me. This person is a, an athlete and said to me, she said, you know, when I go to do something, I just do it and I, I just give it my all. So sometimes I overdo, over contract. And yoga is that, that Goldilocks balance. It's not too much, not too little. It's that middle. When you can find that sweet spot, that sweet spot is what you're trying to create the shift in. Where it's not too much and not too little. If you were to hold this position like this and allow the transitions to happen within you, your body, your nervous system may start shaking, it may start doing different things. Now you're getting to the nitty gritty part of things. Now your body's adjusting. It knows if there's too much internal rotation of one leg, too much external of another, one foot drops, one foot doesn't, you're slouching, you're this. It knows what to correct if you allow it to. All of the asanas, asanas, depending upon how you want to pronounce it, all are like antenna, all of them. They're just like antenna that they just want to go ahead and create a shift, but you need to fine tune it. So fine tuning, it means you got to get to that sweet spot and then you just have to be patient. You just have to sit here and wait. So this is one variation of staff pose that you can do where your arms are out like this. Now it requires more trunk muscles in order to be able to sit up and do this well. Another position of this that you can do is we can take this where you still have your palms facing um, upwards, but then you bring your arms so that they're, they're 90 degrees still facing each other, but they're 90 degrees above you. And this is the same thing. What you're doing is you're drawing your hands so that they're going in this direction. Up, 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 up. Just keep going up as you hold this position. Still the lower body, feet towards you, legs are locked in in that Goldilocks sweet spot. Now, elbows don't have to be 100% locked, but they need to be reaching upwards always, always reaching upwards. Not together, not apart, just like this. This is another variation of it. 
And then the last variation of it that I want to show you for today would be one which requires movement, where you come out to approximately 60 degrees with your hands, and then you bring them up to 90. You breathe in as they come up, you breathe out as they go down. In, out, in, out. And the, the movement is about one second per. So one second, one second. So if I were to do it, sit tall, and if I were to do this, I'm breathing in and out through my nose. So I would be breathing in, And I can feel that my arms are a little bit off. One's going down a little more than the other. That'll shift in time where it'll become more balanced. I can feel that they're off right now. <clears throat> so inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. And again, we're only coming to 60 degrees. and not dropping them all the way down. We're just coming to 60. So for those of you who practice Kundalini Yoga, you can use a mantra instead of a, just a breath or just follow the breath. So Sat Nam, Sat Nam, Sat Nam, as you're mentally reciting this, as you're breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. So first variation of staff pose, bring your hands out like this, stretch. So you can feel that nerve stretch and you have to use your entire lower body and spine to stay up straight because now there's no arm support. So you're sitting up straight. Next variation is up like this, <clears throat> where your arms are at 90 degrees to your body, or I guess straight line, could call it 180, but they're straight up and they're pointing towards each other. And the third variation is you come like this, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, approximately 60 degrees. And what this is doing is this is working the collarbones, this is working the scapulas, this is getting motion into your body so that every time that your arms are moving, your scapulas are sort of dancing, they're going back and forth, they're pivoting. It just creates a, a nice shift for you because now you have to keep yourself strong but yet add motion to it. So, add those couple of variations to staff pose, do it for three minutes, Pick one, you don't have to do them all. <clears throat> Pick one, and if you stay with just staff pose, perfect. There's no need to go any further than that. Staff pose is wonderful. But again, it is one of the classic 84 positions in Hatha Yoga that will create for you the ability to sit well. So if you want to enhance your sitting practice, you wanna be able to sit and meditate better, longer, with less discomfort, just continue to do staff pose. As you get good, maybe you want to add in some of these variations. It's a wonderful thing that you can do for yourself. Stay with staff pose, take the variations, stay exactly where you are, doesn't matter. They're all great. As always, I wish you well. Satnam.